In 1781, as the Revolutionary War for Liberty began to rage against Britain, a woman held captive in the Massachusetts colony named Bet overheard her captors in conversations with a dinner guest, a lawyer named Theodore Sedgwick. And what piqued her attention specifically was their descriptions of British tyranny and manifestos for independence that they were writing and sharing. And these concepts of liberty were dear to her heart. So Bette learned that the man who'd held her captive and this lawyer, John Sedgwick, were both authors of something called the Sheffield Declaration, a colonial petition against tyranny, a manifesto for individual rights, a document which became the precursor to the Declaration of Independence. These men that she was overhearing had written this foundational American document in this house in which Bette was now imprisoned. And she remembered those words when she risked her life and escaped because Bette had been violently abused. She'd been struck by a burning hot kitchen shovel trying to protect another captive and it had left her forever scarred. She found Theodore Sedgwick and he took on her case and they challenged in court the very idea of slavery based on the wording of the Massachusetts Constitution that her captor's peers had just written. So in a landmark decision, the jury agreed and awarded Bette her freedom plus financial damages. And within two years, Massachusetts abolished slavery for good. That was the same year the United States won its independence. Well, Bette took on the name Elizabeth Freeman and accepted a paid job working for Sedgwick. As we look back toward the ancestors who put their lives on the line, whose shoulders we stand on, one of those giants is Elizabeth Freeman, a founding mother and our world's ongoing mission for basic human rights. <laughs>